Welcome back. Uh, so I thought a good place for us to start is what exactly I mean when I say experimental psychology, cognitive psychology, things like that. Uh, so basically, when I meet new people, this is how it goes down. Hey, Frank, it's so good to meet you. Oh, yeah, totally. You too. So what is it you do for a living? Well, I've got a PhD in cognitive psychology. Oh, psychology. I bet you're psychoanalyzing me right now. Tell me, what am I thinking? And then, almost involuntarily, I have this reaction. Uh, actually, no. Experimental psychology, cognitive psychology, we don't do that sort of thing. I don't have any training in it. Um, you're actually thinking of, like, counseling or Freudian psychology, and that's not what I do. Oh. And then a bunch of disappointment, and it's awful, and I hate it. Um, the variant that I've unfortunately got to experience in the past couple years in the introductions or whatever. Hey, Joe, nice to meet you. Oh, yeah, totally nice. Great meeting you. Uh, so what is it you do? Oh, well, currently I'm job hunting. Um, looking at anything and everything I can. Oh, wait, wait. You have a PhD in psychology. Can't you just, like, hang up a shingle and start your own practice? And again, because I've heard this so many times, I have an almost involuntary... Reaction. <sighs> no, actually, I don't have, like, any training in that, and it would be really unethical for me to do so. So, no. Okay. Basically, what I'm getting at here is cognitive psychologists are not counseling psychologists. Um, so, let's break this down sort of like I would for intro psych. Basically, we can break psychology into two camps. We have the squishy and we have the not squishy. And this terminology is actually not just mine. Uh, other people I've spoke to have also used this terminology on both sides of the squishiness spectrum. Uh, so the squishy psychology are the counselors and the clinical psychologists. So these are people who went to school to help people. These can be day-to-day -day problems that they're helping with family problems, marriage problems, just general day-to-day -day life problems, more significant mental health problems. You know, in any case, these people, that's their focus, is on helping people. In the non-squishy side, we have the experimental psychologists. Uh, so over here, it's not like we are doing experiments on helping people better. That's squishy. So in the not-squishy side of things, we are interested in how people work. So for cognitive, this can be how people process information in general, how people learn new stuff, how you retain information, so memory, uh, what your attention does and how it works. Uh, other squishy fields are things like developmental psychology. Uh, developmental psychologists are interested in people from womb to tomb. Uh, so from birth, up through death. There's a lot of changes that happen over the course of the lifespan, and developmental psychologists are interested in that. Usually they'll focus on an age group, um, although you can do multiple age groups as comparative. So another field is neuropsychology. Neuropsychologists are interested in the brain and its impact on things, people, behavior, what have you. Um, and I should mention now that you don't have to be purely in one little camp. Uh, so cognitive neuropsychology is a really popular field and growing more popular as the technology develops, uh, where you look at the brain and what it's doing during different cognitive functions. Uh, so what is the brain doing when somebody's learning new information, when they're recalling stuff, uh, thinking about what they ate last Tuesday, you know, we can look at what the brain's doing and try to correlate that with behavior. Another field is social psychology, and this is interested in how people act in groups and the impact of the group on the person's behavior. Uh, so this is contrasted to sociology, where people are interested in group dynamics. 
Uh, so social psychology, uh, you can think of things like Zimbardo. If you're familiar with the Zimbardo prison study, that was a social psych experiment interested on power dynamics and their impact on how people behave. Uh, there's all sorts of conformity experiments, um, what makes people attracted, attractive or attracted to each other, um, group think, all of these things would fall under social psych. Uh, another field is psychophysics. Uh, so this isn't just a bunch of crazy physicists running around with knives, as much as the name suggests that should be the case. And let me see what you have! A knife! No! Uh, psychophysics is basically sensation and perception. It's quantifying and measuring people's percepts of senses or sensations that they had. Uh, so when you eat something, what does it taste like? Uh, when you see something, what sort of processes happen? Uh, visual illusions can be really enlightening for the different perceptions that we have and a lot of shortcuts that we use to process the world around us. Uh, finally, the one I'll mention, last one I'll mention is IO, which is Industrial Organizational Psychology. Uh, so IO is basically how can we make businesses and organizations and what have you run more efficiently. Uh, so with this, you can kind of think of these people like the Bobs in office space. They're able to maximize work, uh, worker productivity in a way that might not be beneficial for people who aren't sort of running in redundant jobs, but uh, a healthier, happier side of IO is improving people's workflow, improving their productivity, finding new ways to train people on things related to their jobs. Uh, so they do testing to see what the best way to teach this information is. I really should not forget applied psychology. I'm calling it applied. Turns out this has a different meaning in the US and Canada. To me, as American, uh, applied is when we take basic psychological principles, usually cognitive in my case, and apply them to the real world. So I have done experiments in driving simulators based on what we know about how attention works. How can we make driving a safer endeavor for people? Uh, so in Canada, applied means counseling, but US tends to mean human factors, ergonomics, you know, applying stuff to the real world. Okay. So I think a key thing to talk about here beyond just the scope of the different fields is the training that people have to go through in order to become a whatever psychologist. So for a counseling psychologist, uh, they graduate undergrad, they go to grad school in a counseling program or clinical. Clinical is a bit more competitive and a bit more hardcore uh, than counseling. So it's, uh, it's a little bit of a different beast, but some of this still applies. Uh, so you go to school, you take classes. Uh, typically you'll have like a year of stats, which is where I interacted the most with the counseling students at my school. Um, so you take your classes, you learn about the theoretical underpinnings of how you're going to approach treating people. Uh, and there's many different ways to treat people. Uh, so one of them is Freudian psychology or a Freudian approach. Um, I think it's psychodynamic, uh, is the technical name for it, but our psychoanalytic, clearly this is my field. Uh, but basically, you know, Freud, this is how people work. This is where people go wrong. This is how you fix them. And I mean, that's basically the case for like humanistic psychology, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy has a theoretical underpinning. And so as a grad student, these people pick what approach they're going to use to try to help people. In addition to that, they also practice helping people. Early on, it's just recording themselves giving mock therapy sessions to a friend, relative, whatever. And then they get feedback on that from fellow students, from people like faculty in the program to improve their rapport, their ability to get the information, ask questions, 
uh, come across as caring and supportive and not a condescending jerk. Um, these are important skills to learn. They go through, uh, in our school, they would do a thesis. And the thesis was usually advisor data that they would analyze in a different way, write it up. Um, after that, they would get the approval of the department. And then after that, they would do a placement where they would go be a practitioner somewhere, not at our school, for a year. And then they would come back, do their dissertation, and graduate. And they would graduate with a PhD. It's also possible to get a PsyD, which is not thesis-based, uh, but is focused on counseling as well. Okay, so that's a squishy process. At least at the school I went to, it may vary at different schools. Not squishy process is kind of similar. We take classes, your stats, experimental methods, cognitive classes. Um, we do an experiment. We do many experiments. We do our master's thesis, write it up, defend it, and I'm going to make a separate video on that sort of process. Um, then there's the qualifying exam where you basically have to prove that you're going to be an expert in whatever you say you're going to be an expert in. Um, there's different ways to do that, um, which again, n next video probably. And then dissertation where you have several experiments, you propose, you run, you write up, you defend, and boom, you've got a PhD. Similar process, but experimental psychologists are not getting training in how to help people. We don't know how to do that. I mean, I have some intuitive sense on how to help like my friends, but to actually help somebody who's thinking about divorce beyond just friendly personal advice, that is well out of my expertise. And to open up a shop to me is unethical. Um, I've known some people who've done it and maybe I'll make some uh, dirt videos uh, talking about that, but to me, that is just morally not okay, ethically not okay. Job options for a counseling psychologist, uh, they can continue on the academic path, become a professor at a university, um, depending on the tier of the university and their focus. Maybe they'll have grad students of their own conduct research on how better to help people, uh, different things that may impact what is effective, what isn't, what people need help with, what they don't, um, all of that stuff. Get grad students, get postdocs, um, the whole academic life. Or they can go into counseling. Uh, they can open up their own practice. They can work through one of the medical groups. Uh, in any case, you know, that will require licensing, which does cost money. Uh, so I think... This was 10 years ago, so hopefully the pay has increased since then. But somebody with a PhD in psychology in the state I was living in, and it wasn't one of like the necessarily poorer states, uh, they were looking at starting at $30,000 a year for counseling with a PhD, which, ouch. <laughs> um, not exactly what you think when you go into grad school, um, but again, topic for another video. Job options for the experimental psychologist depends on the field. For all of them, certainly we can go into the academic setting, continue on as a professor, get adjunct jobs, adjunct jobs, I swear I can speak English, um, which if you're not familiar is basically be a contract teacher and it's becoming more popular topic for another video. Um, but dependent on the field that you're in, you might be able to go into like school psychology and help kids, help with curriculum development, help with that stuff. You might be able to go into industry, uh, so become like a user interface designer or researcher for like the big tech companies. Um, you might be able to help with like car design, interface design in machines that sort of stuff. Um, I was told when I started grad school that a lot of psychologists, because of the training that we get in stats, we can go into data analysis jobs. 
Although I think the field has shifted somewhat since I was in grad school because big data is basically what statistics jobs have become. And that requires stuff that I wasn't taught. And I don't think a lot of psychologists are. Um, IO has the easiest pathway into industry. So they can get corporate jobs in HR, in specialized departments that focus on maximizing the effectiveness of the company. They might be able to go into a consulting firm that does these things sort of outsource for companies. Um, so yeah, lots of different job options for experimental psychology. But again, coming back to this point of not having training in helping people. So having an experimental degree and going into counseling is a bit sketch to me because we don't have the training for it. Um, so yeah, how's this video? If you guys have any questions about any of this stuff, feel free to ask in the comments. Call to action, like, comment, subscribe. Um, probably gonna have a Patreon set up. If you guys are liking my face and what I'm talking about, feel free to support the channel. Uh, hoping to have new videos at every week at the very least, but we'll see. And see you in the next video.